All right, I forgot to hit record, so we're on the back of the first page. Okay, distributed property. That's the first thing we're going to look at. Okay, a step-by-step -step procedure that uses math ma mathematical computation. So do you remember the distributed property where you take A times B, A times C, and you get a new number? I don't like it with letters. I prefer it with numbers. This is what it would look like. means I would take 4 times x, which would give me 4x, 4 times 2, which would give me 8. Okay? So I like, I like examples with numbers. This is called the distributive property. This is where we're going to start first. Okay? All right. We're going to jump right in on example 1. We're going to distribute and I draw the arrows. It helps me. That's the way I was taught. I've always remembered it. The word distribute means I'm multiplying these. Okay. So 2 times x gives me 2 x. Two times six gives me plus twelve. That is how you're distributing. So now let's try this one. We have the four to the y and the four to the, is that a positive or negative twenty? Cover up everything in front of it, though. All the numbers and letters in front of it. Is that a positive or a negative? Negative. Yeah, they're all the same. No, they're not. Okay. I'm trying to figure out, like Joyce said, they don't test new, new. So this, I'm guessing, is last year's list. I'll send you the one Paula made. Well, this is from emerging, but there's split up by. Oh, okay. Let me send you something. Okay. So I have 4 times y, which gives me 4y. And then 4 times negative 20, which is going to give me negative what? 80. We're going to have to get used to. So look, see if I cover up that 2 and that x, is that 6 positive or negative? Because I'm looking in front of it, positive. When I cover up everything in front of it, do you see how that works? So what's that in one? Negative. Negative. Okay. That's what helps me. All right, let's do this. I have negative 5 times positive 3. Negative times a positive gives me a negative. So what's 5 times 3? Negative 5 times negative 1. Positive 5. So notice, look what happens here. See how it was a minus sign? Why did I switch it to a plus sign? Because what's that tell me now when I cover all that up? That the 5 is positive. If I would have left it a minus sign, what would it have told me when I covered this up? That it would have been a negative. That's why I switch it to a plus sign. So, just to refresh my memory, all you're doing is just not putting the, is it keep, change? Cha I just do it, yep. I just naturally do it, yep. Yeah, so that's where that's coming from, kiddos. Yep, because I, I could have left it minus negative 5, and then I would have just done keep, change, change. That's true. Yeah. Does that make sense? But the answer's not, like, that's the hard part, yeah. Okay. Your turn. Just a few, just two distributive property problems. Just so we can refresh our memory. We've done distributive property already. Do you guys remember this? You did it in sixth grade, and you've done a little bit of it in seventh grade.
Okay. Here we go. I said I draw my arrows to help. So we have 9 times x. What's 9 times x? 9x. 9 times, is that a positive or negative 4? So 9 times positive 4 is positive 36. Times 9 times 4. All right, draw my arrows. Negative two times positive four. Negative eight. Is that seven positive or negative? Is that two positive or negative? So a negative times a negative is gonna give me a? So I'm purposely putting that plus sign in. What's two times four? Or two times seven? 14. Does this help refresh our memories just a little bit as far as what distributive property is? This is not new stuff. You've done distributive property before. Yes? My suggestion is when she has you do it on your own, go ahead and solve it. If you have the answer wrong, that's okay. That's why you have a pencil. Yes. Because then you know where your mistake is. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about like terms. A negative 8x and 5x are like terms. Why do you suppose they're like terms? Negative 8x and 5x. Why would they be like terms? Gentlemen, if I have to kick you out of this class, you won't be welcome back. So think about that. Okay. Negative 8x and 5x. Why are they like terms? What do I keep stressing when I say that? X. They both have an X. That's why they're like terms. I don't care what number's in front. I don't care if it's a positive or a negative. They have the same variable. That makes them like terms. What else might be a like term in this then? It says it right there. The 4 and the 2. The negative 2. They're like terms because they're just numbers. They're just constants. They're the same because they're constants. So these are like terms because they have the same variable. These are like terms because they're both constants. They're both just numbers. What about this 6y? Does it have a like term? Do we have any other y's in there? So does it have a like term? No, it doesn't have a like term. That's okay. What this is saying is I can combine these like terms. So if I put negative 8 and 5 together, how much do I really have? If I put negative 8 and 5 together, how much do I have? Negative 8, though. And a positive 5. So I'm down at negative 8. I'm and I'm adding back 5. Negative 3. When I combine like terms, I'm always adding. Combining like terms is always adding them together. So I just took my negative 8x's plus my 5x's and I get negative 3x's. It's always adding them together. I 
I'm going to keep my 6y because I don't have, you told me I didn't have any like terms. True. Is this 4 positive or negative? Positive. positive. Is this 2 positive or negative? Negative. negative. So if I have 4 plus a negative 2, what do I really have? 2. two. This and this mean the same thing. We combined all the like terms. We basically simplified the expression. And it basically, we simplified the expression. Combining like terms is not something new. You've done it before. Distributive property, not something new. You've done before. All right, we're going to look. We're going to do this one together. The next one you're doing on your own. So make sure you're paying attention. Do you see that there's distributive property here? Yes? So we're, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to distribute. Negative 5 times 2 gives me what? Negative 10x. Negative 5 times, is that 1 positive or negative? negative? So negative 1 times, or negative 5 times negative 1 gives you positive 5. I'm going to rewrite everything else that I didn't use. Okay. Do you see like terms that I can combine? Is there anything I can combine with the ten, negative 10x? Ten what? I agree with you. What is it? The 3x. So I can combine the negative 10x and the positive 3x. How much would that give me? Or remember, we're always adding when combining like terms. Negative 7x. Do you see anything else I can combine? Is there any other like terms? Yes. What is it? Yes. The 5 and the negative 2. I have a 5 and I have a negative 2. If I put that together, how much is that? 3. Positive or negative 3? So positive 3. You just simplified that down. We did a distributed property. We then combined like terms. Now we have a simplified expression. Excellent work. Okay, I don't care. I want you to learn this very early on. I don't care how far you can make it. If you can't make it to the end of this problem, that's fine. I want you to get as far as you can. What do you notice needs to be done first? What's this little thing right here? What property is that? Distributed property. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Distribute that first. I'm betting after you distribute it, you probably have some like terms that you can combine.
Okay, were you able to do some of it? No. Okay. I don't, some is better than none. So that's why I always want you to just try. Okay, so 2 times 3, right? 6y. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. Plus 8, minus 6y. Do you see anything you can combine? What's something I can combine? But the negative 6 got the y with it. What else has the y? You said negative 6, so what else has the y? Where do you see a 3y? In this problem here. In this problem here. So, but the 6y, right? So if I have 6y with negative 6y, how many y's do I have? 6y and negative 6y? Zero. I don't have any y's. 6y plus negative 6y would give me zero. So I can now combine my negative 10 and my 8. If I have negative 10 plus 8, where am I at? So my, there's my simplified expression. I'm done. Even if you could get here, that was a good step. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start giving these, and they're not expressions anymore. They're now equations. I have an equal sign. We're going to apply what we learned, though, what we learned last week and this week now, and we're going to put it all together. So we're going to distribute, because do, do you see that we have to distribute? So what is 4 times 2x? 4 times 2x? 8x. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times, is that a positive or a negative 7? So 4 times negative 7 gives me what? Negative 28 equals 20. This is now a two-step problem. Do you know how to do these? Yeah. yeah, you just took a checkup on them. What would I get rid of first, the 8x or the 28? 28. 28. How am I going to get rid of it? Add. Add. Always doing the inverse operation. Whatever I do to one side, got to do to the other. What happens to inverse operations? This cancels out. Very good. This gives me 48 over here. Bring down what I didn't use. What operation is happening right here? 8 what x? Multiplication, so what's the uh, inverse? Division. Division. X equals what? Yeah. Very good. Like always, we check. We go back to the original problem, though, this one. Let me zoom this out again. We go back to this guy right here. So we do 4 parentheses 2 times 6 minus 7 equals 20. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do I have parentheses? So I need to do whatever's on the inside of those parentheses first. 2 times 6. Okay, I solved that. I rewrite. Do I still have parentheses? Yes. So I do what's on the inside of that parenthesis. What is 12 minus 7? Five. Very good. Notice I'm always just writing the answer right below it. Now, 
My last thing to do is 4 times 5. What is that? 20. 20. I'm proving that both sides of my teeter-totter weigh the exact same amount. So since they both match, what does it tell me about 6? It is the answer. Okay. I just kind of want you to see what you have. I want You're going to try this one right here. First thing you see is distributed property. Follow this. The one up above that we just did is going to be the exact same as what we just did, but with new numbers. I can solve one and two step equations showing each step and verify my answer is correct. You'll see a score right next to that. That's your score on the overall check up how you did. Okay. Distribute. Distribute means to multiply. Two times five. 10x. 2 times 3, 6. Why did I write a plus there? What is that telling me about that 6? That it's a positive. Once you got here, is this something you guys have already learned? Two step equations. You've already learned those. What am I going to get rid of first? How am I going to get rid of a positive 6? Minus 6. Inverse operations. Whatever I do to one side. How do I get that 10 away from that X? Division. Inverse operations cancel. How many people could do part of that? Like maybe the distributing, maybe started to solve it. How many people could do part of that? Give me a thumbs up if you could, thumbs down if you couldn't. Okay, how many people could get to the answer? Good, 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 good. Now let's check. Two, parentheses, five times two, 
plus 3 equals 26. You notice I'm like writing that above every single time I check. The reason I do that is because it's reminding me that I'm not balancing anymore, that I'm using PEMDAS. So what should I do first? Okay, inside the parentheses, what should I do first? Uh-huh. Which gives me 10. Okay. Do I still have parentheses? All right. So what is 10 plus 3? And 13 times 2 or gives you? So notice I proved that both sides equal each other. What are we thinking so far? Doing all right? Okay. On to the next page. It says solving multi-step equations. Simplify each side first. If you look down here, what do you notice? It's like I got a two-step problem on both sides, right? That's okay. I'm going to rewrite it so we have room. I'm just going to be able to introduce this today and we'll be able to finish it tomorrow. But I want to show you something. I want you to put your pencils down and just look up here. Okay. My teeter totter is balanced right now. Okay. I have to get it down to where X is on one side and the constants on the other. Right now, you notice I have an x and a constant, right? x and a constant. I want x's on one side, I want constants on the other. I could start solving, there are four ways to start solving this problem, all of which are right. I'm gonna show you the way I was taught first. My high school algebra teacher always said, Find your negative exponent if you have one. Your negative one with a variable. Do we have one that has a negative variable? She said, find that one. If you've got that, start there. She always had me get rid of the variables first. The reason I get rid of this variable first, this negative one, is because to move it over here, I would add 2x. Add 2x. Inverse cancels. And now you're going, wait a minute, why didn't we divide? Because the operation is multiplication. I'm only dividing when I want to separate the number from the x. Notice this one, I took the x with me, right? That's why. Bring this down. Now my to a two-step problem that I'm very familiar with. That's also why I get rid of the variables. I get do the variables first. I could have started it this way. I could have done this variable first. Well, that's a positive 4x, agreed? Yes? So how would I get rid of it? I would minus it. That would give me negative 6x plus 9 equals negative 15. I got a lot of negatives, don't I? I don't know about you, but I know this about myself. The more negatives I have, the better, the more likely I am to make a mistake. Okay? So I could have started them that way, right? Both still two-step equations that we know how to get to. Or... I could have got rid of the constants first. 
This one's negative, so I would have added it. What's 9 plus 15? 24, good job. I don't like getting rid of the constants first. Here's why. Now you have x's left. Does this look, a, I don't know, does it look more confusing or is it just me? Does it look, what do you guys think? Does it, does it look, what looks easier? The top one or the bottom one? Top, because we're already used to solving problems that way. We're not used to solving problems where we have two variables. So for me, that's why I think that top one makes more sense. If I got rid of the constants, I could have done it this way too. Last time I got rid of the 15. Again, that's a lot of negatives. I don't like negatives. Okay. We're going to stop right here for today. We'll pick up tomorrow with this. And then we will do some I do, you do.